So today we are going to be checking out Zorin OS 17.2. So let's get started. Now 17.2 is their latest lineup and you could actually download it now and it released on September 19th. The biggest change that they did that you're not going to notice is that they went to Ubuntu 24.04 which means you're going to get the newer kernels and newer stuff so you're going to have more hardware support. Now also in this version they gave you more control over appearances and windows. Now I did say this before coming from a Windows environment something like Zorin OS is very comfortable to you because it actually stays with the layout of what Windows 10 or Windows 11 or whatever you are used to. So on the bottom left, we do have the start menu and we do have the applications itself. Anytime you open an application, say like a text editor, it will be on an icon on the bottom. Again, something like you're used to in Windows 10. So you're not really fighting to learn the operating system itself because you are familiar with a lot of the things already. This will be very familiar to you. Now moving on, let's go over to the appearance, which is the biggest thing that they have changed. You can change different styles. If you wanted a smaller taskbar and windows to show their names, this is something you could use. I like this style more. This is more my favorite style where I could actually see the application like Firefox and what I'm doing in that task. You also have a Windows 11 style or I would say this is more of a, like a Windows 11 or Chrome. You do have the applications like this and then you have the stuff on the bottom. And then you have more of a Mac layout where you can get like a menu bar on the bottom and then stuff on top like this. So I'm gonna go back to the original appearance. Moving forward, you can change more desktop layouts if you are in the pro setup, but I am using the Zorin Core and I am using the pre-release version. So I've actually been testing this for a couple days before this has been released. So I'm really glad that they did send this over to me before. Checking out themes, you also have your accent colors. So you can actually change these as well. So you can see that this is changing over here on the top left. I'm gonna keep it as blue. And you do also get dark mode. I do really like their dark mode. It looks really good on this setup. But for now, I'm just gonna keep it in light mode. Now, this is the new thing that they added, which is others, and you can actually add your own themes now. If you want a different type of icon set or a different type of uh, application set or how the title bar looks and everything, you can change it through here. They do have instructions on how to use third-party themes, so you can just follow this over here as well. Now, moving on, and effects. Now, I do like this jiggly window mode. It's something that I usually add in my GNOME because I like when I'm moving the window, I can see that I'm actually moving it. So I do like this jiggly mode, but I'm gonna turn that off for now. Now, they do have this desktop cube, so if you wanted a cooler effect, you could enable this. Go into your Start Menu button, and then you could rotate it like a cube, which looks pretty cool. You can also change the background so it's not white. It's really up to you. If you want more effects, you can do this, but I usually just leave that off. Moving on, we do have desktop. And you could actually enable your home, trash, mount to volume, stuff like that. I tend to leave home and trash just so I know I could uh, empty my recycling bin because sometimes I forget that I fill this up and I, I don't empty it. But yeah, you do have these options as well. Uh, again, I'm going to uncheck those. Going back into Windows. Now this is where they also added more features. You have uh, window placement. You can also do Windows tiling if you wanted to. Windows title bar, you can actually move this to the left or right. If you are used to Mac, you can actually move this to the left. Stuff like that you want to do with double click. I, I tend to double click to maximize. Uh, let me show you on another window. Again, I should have just left this text editor. But yeah, double click to maximize. But you can also change that function. Double click to minimize instead. So it's really up to you. You can actually now change these around and change our window focus. So if you have two windows up above, you could actually just focus like that. You see how it's focusing on the window just by hovering over it? I don't like this at all because I always like have my mouse play something and I'm typing and the next thing you know, I'm hovering over the wrong menu as I'm typing. So I like to click on focus. But yeah, there's a few things that you can do now on this. You also have now new the new overlay scroll bar, which let me see if I could test this. If I was to type in a bunch of stuff right over here, you see how that scroll bar is so small? Now you could overlay it and then highlight and becomes thick and bigger so it's easier to select. You can also play around with taskbar settings but this is not new. You could also change this from before and if you wanted to leave this layout but change the menu you can also do that as well. You can change the menus over here and then you have your fonts if you wanted to change it. So I'm going to leave this all default. But yeah that's the new appearance menu that you could play around with. Also being this is a brand new installation I'm also going to go into disk uh, uses analyzer just to see how much it's using and a fresh install. So if I go over to my workbench over here, it should be about like, oh, okay, 11.5 gigabytes on a fresh install. And if I use system monitor, it takes up about 2.2. Actually on a fresh boot, brand new fresh boot without anything turned on, it will be 1.8, but it's still like, right. I've noticed that the new operating systems are using right around two gigs of RAM. So we are running up there where 
minimum is like four gigs of RAM to run anything now if you want to run a brand new operating system. But ultimately, one of the features that I do like, which a lot of operating systems also do have, is if you were to download Windows applications but you don't have anything installed for it, you can actually double click and install Windows support. Now, it knows it's a Windows DXE, so it's going to say like, hey, install Windows support. I click on that and it's going to install Wine for me or Windows install. And this is from Zorin OS or their package manager. So I'm just going to install this and see how that works. And there we go. Once we finish installing that app, uh, it instantly just opened up. Now I realized that they are actually using bottles. So you have Windows apps here and it's using bottles. I did do a review on bottles before, so I'm going to leave a link to that video down in the description below and also to the top right over here. But yeah, instantly, like if I cancel this now, I'm going to double click on this. It's going to say, do you want to run it? Run anyway. And there we go. Okay, let's see if it installs. I accept, install, and there you go. This is FTL Windows Edition. And it also creates the icon and now it's loading the game. And there we have our Windows game running on Zorin OS. Continue over here, quit. And now if I over, go over to Wine, you're going to see my game over here and I have bottles. Let me go through these options, continue. And there we have it, just a matter of seconds of installing that Windows thing. And now I have Windows uh, application support so I could actually install stuff. So let me go into bottles. It doesn't actually show me my game that I had in there. So not 100% sure if this is running under bottles, which it could just be running under wine. But yeah, if I head over to Firefox now and do, let's say Notepad++, I'm going to download their latest version, which is 8.7. And head over to, what is it, 64-bit right over here. Let's just do Installer. And I'm in my downloads folder. It even shows the icon in their file manager. So I'm going to go double click on that. So I'm going to run anyway. Close out of the Firefox. I don't need that. And I'm just going to go through these installations just like I would in Windows. Run Notepad++. And here we go. Notepad++. This is a Windows application running on Linux, essentially. Moving on, we do have the notifications over here on the bottom right along with the calendar and stuff that you could add over here, like weather, world clock if you are trying to track another time zone. But yeah, um, you do have your notifications and your calendar. Uh, we do have your system menu over here. So if you go into dark mode, we can add this. And because this is using GNOME, I could actually go in here, install something called extension manager, which I already did. We can actually install different extensions. Now, one of the things that I do want is caffeine, install. Install and now that it's installed There we go. We have our caffeine this way. It'll make it so that our screen doesn't go to sleep But yeah, you can add actual extensions into here from gnome Because most of this like Zorin desktop stuff is using gnome extensions just to work And as you can see there's a lot of extensions that are in place that says Zorin, Zorin, Zorin uh, Printer, Zorin menu, Zorin desktop cube stuff like that. You can actually enable and disable them through here or you can go through the appearance menu that you saw before but ultimately the extensions that i do like from gnome i can apply to this as well another thing i want to also mention is that in their software they also have flat pack support so if you want to install say something like steam you could just head over to steam and then select your repository that you want which is like from flat hub now the first thing i would recommend installing would be flat seal which is something I always have installed. As soon as there's any type of flat pack support, I know that I'm gonna install flat seal. You see bottles is already installed. You could tell because wine was installed this way as well. So there are so many ways that you could get applications from Zorin OS, either through their software center or you could download applications for Windows. Now, ultimately this operating system is really ideal for anyone coming off from Windows or switching over to Linux, but don't want to have to relearn the desktop environment again. Everything around Zorin OS is very familiar to anyone coming off of Windows. And with the latest release moving over to Ubuntu 24.04, you will get more hardware support. So with that being said, I urge you guys to give this a run and give it a test. Now with the ability to actually change the appearances, you can customize Zorin OS the way you want to. Anyway, if you guys have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And that's say my Nerd Cave. Hack to Litter.